Okay, so I want to look at um, le, at Le Chatelier's principle just now, but um, there's a little bit of introduction to that first. First, I need to just explain a re um, a, a, what we mean by a reversible reaction. If we look like at the Haber process of producing um, ammonium, ammonia, okay. No, MH3. Yeah, we got it wrong the first time. Um, then this is a reversible reaction. Now, when we when we have two products producing a, a single other product, or more than two products producing a single other product, it's called synthesis. If we have one product that breaks up into the parts it consisted of, in other words, the reverse of synthesis, the opposite of synthesis is decomposition. So this is a reaction that as you produce this, and this is a gas, that is a gas, and this is a gas. So if we, if we had these, these two gases in a closed system, so somehow we're introducing hydrogen into the system and nitrogen into the system, okay? But then we close it off. So now in here we have hydrogen and, nit and nitrogen, okay? Notice that this is a closed system, which means nothing is escaping. And the, the one thing that's important here is to understand that this whole container is now filled, which means there's volume. And it's filled partly with hydrogen and partly with nitrogen, which means that we have a concentration for hydrogen and we have a concentration for nitrogen. But now these two things will react. Okay. And as they react with one another, they produce a third substance into this con container called ammonia. So now we also have a concentration for ammonia. So in this closed, it's not escaping, it's in there, it's a closed system. Closed system means no matter, which means substances escape, and no energy escapes. Okay, so there's also, if there was any production, if it was an exothermic reaction and it produced heat, the heat is also not allowed to escape from the system, the energy is not escaped. Okay, but um, this is what now happens is that initially there's only a little bit of so again if I plot this this uh, uh, this time instead of plotting volume um, I'm going to rather plot concentration oh yes <coughs> That's slightly better. Instead of using volume, I'm going to use concentration. Okay. So you'll notice that initially, when this reaction starts, we have absolutely no, no um, products. But I have a concentration of hydrogen, and, and you'll notice also that when we, um, this will be two, that will be three. Okay, so we'll initially our concentration for hydrogen will probably be more. Probably, not necessarily, but likely. Hydrogen would be more, nitrogen would be slightly less, because there's less moles needed of it. Okay, but as time goes by, it's not difficult to measure how much nitrogen there is, but one thing that we do know is that uh, the production of of the um, ammonia does this. We know that so far. So far, we know that as products are reacting, the react the the reaction rate is decreasing. Okay, and the reason why it's decreasing because there's less products. But one of the other reasons that's happening here is actually this reaction never stops. Because what happens is as this is being formed, okay, it is also decomposing. 
back into that direction. So as hydrogen and nitrogen is being pro is reacting with one another, it produces, but the concentration of this is so high that the reaction rate is high initially. Remember, high concentration, high reaction rate. So initially we have high concentrations of both. But as time goes by, the concentration becomes less. So what happens? Both of their reaction rates become less. So that at some point, this is going to happen. So here's my, the concentration of this and here this one is but it's never zero remember when we first look at for non-reversible reactions we had um, that one of the reactants went down to zero this one doesn't go down to zero because this one still decomposes so it's never zero but at some point the amount of the constant yeah the, yeah the amount of nitrogen uh, of ammonium produced and the amount of ammonium that decomposes every second is equal so that there's no more change in the in the concentration the reaction hasn't stopped but for every mole produced a mole decomposed so the concentration doesn't change it's just like you and me you hand me a 10 rand I hand you a 10 rand the whole time okay or let's say for example um, you have you have a hundred a thousand rand and you must give me half of your money uh, let's say a quarter of your money each time okay so and I must give you a quarter back so you give me 250 rand yeah, right, let's make it easier let's make it 800 you've got 800 rand so you give me 20 I give you 50 back now of the 850 you must give me a quarter whatever quarter of 850 is um, uh, 225 now I had 150 plus the 225 now I have more but eventually the quarter that you give because my money is increasing your money is decreasing eventually the quarter that you give and the quarter that I give is the same and that's kind of what's happening here we're still doing this trade the whole time but because our trade is the same amount it uh, remains the same concentration so the the reaction rate is still represented by the gradient um, here but when the, the when the gradient is zero it doesn't mean that the reaction has stopped as it has did in the previous graphs it just means that the reaction rate for the forward and the reverse is the same so actually what this gradient is it's the difference between the forward react the the rate the forward reaction minus the reverse reaction rate okay so this is actually the change the change in reaction rate is actually the reaction rate yeah so that when it's zero it just means the change in the reaction rate is zero it doesn't mean the reaction rate is zero it just means there's no change in the reaction rate okay so um eventually when it reaches this point where the forward and the reverse reaction is equal we call it dynamic equivalence equilibrium sorry so dynamic equilibrium or equilibrium chemical equilibrium is when my forward reaction rate is equal to my reverse reaction rate what I'm producing and what I'm uh, decomposing into is amounts the same amount of uh, substance okay now at this point at equilibrium there is now a value defined and that's the KC value so what we do with the KC value is we take the concentration so I'm going to use square brackets for concentration of the products but only for gases and aqueous solutions okay because again we're working with volume the only time we work with volume is with um, sorry concentration the only time we work with concentration is when we work with gas and with aqueous solutions so that's the only time we have dynamic equilibrium is when we work with gases and with um, 
Um, what's the difference between the equilibrium constant and dynamic equilibrium? Dynamic equilibrium just means, dynamic um, talks about, it means change. So if we, if we say dynamic equilibrium, it means, equilibrium means equal. So dynamic equilibrium means the change is equal. My forward change and my reverse change is equal. Okay. The, the equilibrium constant is a number. So dynamic equilibrium is a state. So for example, I finished eating, I'm in dynamic equilibrium. <laughs> okay, it's a state, it's a place, it's a, it's a position. While the equilibrium constant is a value. So I've finished eating and now I weigh 81 kilograms. <laughs> 75 okay so in other words it's a it's a it's a number that's the difference okay and so the kc value only applies in other words i only have my equilibrium number when i've reached equilibrium then the equilibrium number applies and uh, i'll explain now the relevance of this number um Again, the reactants, the concentration of the reactants, um, I only look at the gases and the, and the aqua solutions. Again, for a simple reason, that's the only thing I can work concentration, uh, out concentration, because concentration is, is moles over volume. The only time I'm working with volume is when I have gas um, or I have an aqua solution where volume is the amount of uh, solvent. Okay. So, if I look at a generic example, so for example, I have a reaction, a, um, a, a compound A plus compound B produces compound D and compound C. All of them either gases or, or aqueous solutions. And so if my coefficients is A, B, D, and C, I don't know why I switched that one around. Okay, my KC value will be calculated by taking the concentration in my reaction, and this is a reversible reaction, of C to the power of its coefficient, and D, the concentration of D, compound D, to the power of its coefficient, divided by A to the power of its coefficient, times B to the power of its coefficient. Now, just the reason why it's to the power to is because you can see this is the product of the products times uh, divided by the product product in, in math language product multiplying so for example if I had something like 2 H2O as a product it is actually H2O plus H2O so in this it would be H2O times H2O so it just makes sense to write it as H2O squared. And as a result, because I'm squaring it, I think it actually has something to do with logs. Log law says that when I add, when I add the, add logs, I can't remember now, add logs and multiply the interior, or multiply, yeah. When the interior, yeah, I think it's got something to do on, on why the, the plus becomes a multiply and so why the coefficient becomes an exponent. Something to do with logs. I'm not exactly sure at this point. It's, I only now thought about it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is going to give me a value, a number, a number like 0, 0,3, okay, or a number like 15. Or a number like a thousand, or a number like zero comma zero 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 one two, okay, a number. And the thing about the KC number, KC value, is that it is constant. It doesn't matter what you change, except for one thing. The KC value will always remain constant. Whether I change, so so before we had that our reaction rate can change if we change catalyst, if we change temperature, if we change concentration, my reaction rate, the KC value is absolutely constant for a reaction except for temperature. Temperature is the one thing that changes 
that value. And it, it now depends on whether it's an endothermic or an exothermic reaction on how does it change it. But let's just quickly look at what does the Kc value actually mean. Notice that the Kc value takes a product, the product of the concentration in the numerator divided by the concentration. So a number like, like 0, 0,3 is actually like 3 over 10. So does this yield more or use, um, uh, how will I say it? Does it does it have a high yield or a low yield? Now yield means in either in 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 does it produce more or less? Yield would mean if I, for example, if I put ten rand in and I get twenty rand back, that is a high yield. Low yield is if I put ten rand in, I get eight rand back. There's a low yield. So would you say that's a high yield or low yield? low because the numerator represents the products okay for so, so this is not hundred percent how it works but basically if this is less than one it is a low yield can never be negative of course okay less than one so this would be a low yield this would be a very high yield okay and if it's equal to one then I suppose you can't describe whether it's high or low it's just yielding <laughs> okay so um, just in terms of, of that a little bit okay now um, why would or, 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 okay let's look at the graph and look at different different changes and how the KC value affects the graph so let's say we had a product being formed here and reactants being used up here there's two reactants being used up let's say I all of a sudden increase one of the reactants the concentration of one of the reactants what will it look like so one the, one of these two reactants all of a sudden this is the concentration and all of a sudden I increase its concentration a little bit now there's there's more of this one now notice now my KC value must be constant so one of my products sorry one of my reactants increased what would that do to the KC value as a whole if I increased one of the something in the denominator what would it do to the KC value it's supposed to be constant but it's only constant at equilibrium so all of a sudden by doing this I've upset the equilibrium now just look at the KC value what what does it what happens if I increase a denominator what does it do to the fra the whole fraction hmm. So when I increase the denominator, it decreases the fraction. So in order for this thing to balance itself out, either one of two things might, must happen. Either my other one must decrease, okay, because my KC value must get back to its original value. Now all of a sudden it's too high. So either I must decrease my other reactant or I must increase my products or maybe even both and since this is all happening at the same time both will happen do you understand so when this one is increased okay slowly but surely it is going to be used up again and this one is also going to start to be used up again okay this one is going to decrease the other reactant and since both of them, they reactants, this one will start increasing until it reaches equilibrium and then it starts decreasing again. You see what's happening? Okay. One way of looking at it, this was now looking at it from a math perspective. Because this one all of a sudden increased, 
This one can't all of a sudden change, not unless we affect it. It now has to slowly go back into equilibrium. So that's why this one, this one, even there, it just slowly now starts going down to equilibrium. This one, because all of a sudden there are extra reactants, okay? These extra reactants can now produce more ammonia, in, for example. And so he starts increasing, but then after a little bit of a time, there's more ammonia and ammonia decomposes, supplementing. So it kind of does what it was doing in the beginning. Again, it was increasing. No, wait, you know what? I actually did it wrong. It should look like this. It should look like this. Because for a little, these ones go down both of these ones go down while that one goes up. Okay, sorry, no, it doesn't do a slow change. It does a, it, it should look like it should look in the beginning. If these two goes down and this one makes this concave up, then these ones go down. This one must make, have the same, same effect. Okay, so that's one change and I should have again is, and that's what the change would look like if I did a, an increase in one of my concentrations. What would the change look like if I reduce the volume of the container? So I've, I looked at increasing the concentration of one. Um, actually, let's just quickly see what would happen if I increase the concentration of um, the product, how would that affect it? So if I increase the concentration of the product, okay, I'm increasing the numerator. What will that do to the fraction as a whole? Increase it. So I must try and, re and, and, and get that fraction to go down again to the actual KC value that it should have. So what must my what will these two will both change and how will they change this one will go okay if I make something if I make a denominator smaller I'm making the fraction bigger and I want the fraction to get smaller so I must make the denominators bigger both of these must increase and so both of them will do this and this one will go down. Uh, he will end up a little bit higher than he used to be. Does that make sense? Okay. Now another option. What will happen if I decrease? So remember this is all happening in a closed container. What happens if this was like a syringe type of container and I could now squeeze down on it so that the volume where the gas is in is now decreased? Okay, what would happen to the concentration of everything? Because everything is in here. Remember, concentration is mole divided by volume. What would happen with if I dec decrease the volume of this container. So everything's concentration will increase. Because if volume decreases, what happens to the whole fraction? It increases. So everything's concentration will go up all of a sudden. Okay. And now it is just going to depend on, on who must give way the most. Because in this fraction we now have, uh, um, we've got factors at the top and we have factors in the bottom. And what we need to now do is look at the mole. In other words, the number of factors and the, the, the the part that has the most, let me just think about this a little bit. So 
if I increase the volume, so for example, for N2 plus H3, H2 produce forward and backwards, uh, 2 N H3 and 3. You can, you, you'll see that if we use the KC value for this one, the KC value for this one has here the NH3 to the power of 2. So there's two factors in the numerator. For this one, there's an N2 and there's a H2. So this one has four factors in the bottom. Okay. Now we want the KC value all of a sudden all of the values have increased okay so if all of the values increase if we look at the f at the factors which part the numerator or the denominator will have the biggest effect the one with the most factors will have the biggest effect The denominator, there's four factors in the denominator. So if the denominator, if all of the values increased, but the denominator had more values that could increase, will this fraction become bigger or smaller? smaller? Smaller, because the denominator, even though the numerator also increased, the denominator had more factors that could increase. So if I increase the volume, the KC value will decrease. The, okay? But the KC value must be constant. So it's now going to try and get back. How will it get back? Okay? We want the KC value to increase again. How can we increase this? The numerator will increase. The denominators will decrease. Okay? So notice the numerator is going to increase, okay, the products, the denominators will decrease, okay. Now we'll get to Le Chatelier and where that will also start making sense. Le Chatelier says that what we'll do is we'll count the we'll see on what side do we have the most gas in moles here we have all of this is gas all of this is gas and notice that if I increase the um, amount of if I if I increase the concentration or I increase, decrease the volume. In other words, I put more pressure on it. That means I'm increasing, decreasing the volume. I'm increasing concentration when I decrease volume. Okay, then it's it's almost like there's too much. Um, uh, remember, we were talking about successful collisions. Now, most of the space is now being occupied by nitrogen and hydrogen because they take up of the space. One, four, four of the six moles. So in total, for every four of six moles is taken up by them. So if we increase pressure, okay, we decrease volume, the successful collisions will happen between be, be, with, where most of the space is taken up. So if I increase pressure, I will increase, I will increase the reaction rate for both because both are gases. But who will get the most advantage, who will get the biggest benefit, is nitrogen and hydrogen. So their reaction rate will be most favored. And that's when we start talking about that we are favoring the forward reaction. Okay, we'll look at... Um, so if I favor the forward reaction, it means I'm doing something to allow the reactants to react more. And produce more reactants so now and you can see that if if my reactants are decreasing 
it means their reaction rate is higher. My products are being formed more, but the more products I have, eventually there's enough of that product so that the, the space now being occupied is now more even. The amount of space that nitrogen and hydrogen now occupies is less because they've reacted and hydrogen is more, oh, sorry, uh, 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 ammonia is more. So that, so that now, because it's getting more, that increased pressure is favoring it more and therefore it decomposes back until that exchange again becomes even and the Kc value is equal. Okay, so, um, so what Le Chatelier did is he formulated this into a theorem or in a principle called Le Chatelier's principle. And what he said is that when you make a change into a system, it causes a stress on that system. So for example, increasing the, um, the pressure, okay, or increasing pressure or decrease volume is the same thing increasing pressure or adding a substance, you're adding a stress, an extra addition to, a, to, to a, um, a system, then the reaction will react to compensate for that stress in the opposite direction. Okay, so for example, if you add a reactant, the reaction will produce more products. You see, it, it, it reacts to favor uh, not to favor, it reacts to compensate for the stress that you've added. If you increase pressure, where are you putting the most stress? You are putting the most stress on the side that is taking up the most molar uh, volume. Okay, And therefore, it will react to relieve that stress. In other words, we will it will start producing more of the, of the gas that will occupy less space. That makes sense. Um, let's quickly look at adding what will happen if we change um, if we ta change temperature okay so here when we change temperature If we change temperature, you have to keep in mind that, so that something again like the Haber process or producing ammonia okay this is an exothermic reaction. I think it was something like that, I can't remember, okay. If something is an exothermic reaction, it means that heat is a reactant. But in my Kc value, heat is not a factor. So if I increase temperature, following Le Chatelier's principle, what have I added? A product or reactant. You've added a product and because it's a reversible reaction it will relieve the stress by producing more of the of the reactants which will mean if at this point I now change the temperature what will happen? I will start producing more of these. Now look what happens when I produce more of this. If I produce more of this, both of them will start going like that. Higher until I reach a new equilibrium, higher until I reach a new equilibrium. If I do that, what will happen to the concentration of this? It will decrease because it's decomposing. You're adding heat to it, so it's decomposing. So it will go down. Now notice what has happened to the Kc value. In my Kc value, my products, my concentration for my products went down. 
my concentration for my reactants, reactants went up. What is going to happen to the Kc value as a whole? It will decrease because the numerator gets less, the denominator gets bigger, so Kc value will be reduced. And so that is why in all the other cases the, the change is one-sided. Okay, so for example, I add, um, uh, if, I, if I increase the, um, the concentration of the one, my other reactant, for example, starts reducing to compensate for that increase. So the change is on, on this side, and as a result, it produces more on the other one. Or if I change the volume, again, the change happens on both sides. The one, the, the one side start the one side starts decreasing and the other side starts increasing okay but if I look at temperature temperature has an effect on the one side where it decreases this one and increases that one while all, the, all of the other others it, it did both on both sides okay so it had the same effect on both sides so um, in this case it really it does change the Kc value because it's completely one-sided the change okay so that is um, if it is an exothermic reaction if it's an endothermic reaction just the opposite happens so for example we look at photosynthesis if heat is a reactant and I add now heat, I increase the temperature, then my Kc then um, in, in my reactants, I will actually have that my my reactants will all of a sudden just start decreasing because I've added a reactant and my production will increase. And so my Kc value will increase because products increase and reactants decrease. Does that make sense? Okay, so how we will calculate val the Kc value, I won't explain that theoretically. We'll look at an example. And then um, I just want to look at the harbor process as a whole, as an industrial application of everything that we've looked at. Okay, because you see the harbor process is a is a unique problem. I don't know how unique, maybe unique is not the word. But for example, the Haber process's reaction rate is extremely, extremely slow. It's very slow. And the problem is, it also decomposes. So not just is the reaction rate slow, is if I produce ammonia, it starts decomposing back. So we need to now go and see what can I do to solve the problem of, and that's actually what Harper did, that's, that's why he, this process is named after him, is he found the solution to, to this problem. He found a solution on how to produce this. Um, enthalpy here is also important. Give me some solutions. This thing, uh, 92.6 or something like that. Give me a solution. What can I do? I've got a very slow reaction rate. I want to now increase that reaction rate. What are some solutions? And I'm only working with gases. You can increase pressure. Now the very nice thing about increasing pressure in this is if I increase pressure, what will be favored? Production or the reverse reaction? Production, because if I increase the pressure, on this side I've got four 
units of gas, four moles of gas on that side I've got two. So if I increase pressure the the extra gas will kind of try and relieve itself by producing more of the gas that, that occupies less space. That makes sense, doesn't it? So increasing increasing the pressure is a very important aspect of producing ammonia industrially. Problem is increasing pressure is very, very expensive in the industry. Okay? So that's one thing, but it's still so it increased the reaction rate, which is great. There's more reactions. Um, unfortunately the because it's a reverse reaction that's a little bit of a problem. So what else can we do? What can we also do? So we've increased the reaction the the, the, the pressure. So we decreased volume. We can add a catalyst, that's what we looked at before. There's metal-based catalysts, okay? So we can add a catalyst that, that um, uh, and we'll choose a catalyst that favors the forward reaction. I don't know if, there's, if that's the case, I don't think so. Um, but a catalyst will always increase reaction rate. So yes, add a catalyst. What else can we do? No, because we can only increase concentration when we work with aqueous solution. So yes, we are actually increasing the concentration when we decrease volume, because concentration is mole divided by volume. So if I if I decrease volume, I am increasing concentration. Okay, so yeah, increasing pressure is actually increasing vo uh, concentration. Which one are you guys leaving out? Temperature. I can always increase temperature to increase reaction rate. Problem is, who am I favoring? So notice that this is negative, which means, and what's this calculation? That is the potential energy of my products minus potential energy of my reactants, which means if the product is less than reactant which means that the extra energy that the reactants have is given off as heat. Now, so I figured out heat is a product. If I increase temperature, which will increase reaction rate, as a matter of fact, this, this reaction in the harbor process happens at about 400 degrees Celsius, I think. Okay, They do add, but the problem is, and they would love to make it more, the problem is, as I increase um, uh, the reaction rate, even though it's very slow, if I heat it too much, I start favoring the reverse reaction too much. And so I can increase heat, but unfortunately as I'm increasing heat, the more I'm increasing heat, I am countering my the effect that I got by increasing pressure. Okay, So the whole idea was finding the ideal situations in what, under what heat under what pressure and what catalyst to use to you to get the ideal um, conditions for yielding ammonia at lowest cost because obviously when you have high temperatures too high temperatures you start melting your your uh, the stuff you work with when you um, at pressure you need hydraulic pumps to work under high pressure and uh, those are expensive to maintain um, catalysts, uh, at least they don't get used up, but um, some catalysts like platinum can be expensive. In this case, iron, I suppose, is quite cheap.